Hello and welcome to lesson number 22. Uh, in the last video we learned Cumberland Gap. And now I get asked a lot, how do you get to play fast? And um, there's, a, there's a few answers to that, but I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, maybe take two of them. Um, one is important that you really know the tune of course that's that's an obvious one you 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 really need to need to know exactly what you're doing so every bar needs to be practiced really well mm -hmm. and then the next one and the next one and the next one so you also need to increase your ability to feel what you do with your hands so in order to do that, let's say you do a forward-backward roll. The one you've been playing now for quite some time. So when you then play that forward-backward roll, try to concentrate only on the thumb. Just really try to feel how it feels when, this, when you hit the string. And then do the same with the index finger. same with the middle finger. Try to do that on each finger, just concentrate on each finger just for a minute. That's a long time actually a minute, but just you know a while. Just do that and really just play really slow and concentrate on that particular finger you just you know put your mind on as like thumb. Index so far. you try to concentrate on every finger in the moment you do that you already feel like every note is becoming like a hammer it's not just you know, sort of a, a random movement it's really like it's like chiseled out when you listen to Earl Scruggs uh, play you know the, the most astounding thing is that it seems like there's so much distance between the notes and it's because there's so much awareness of each note he plays. Uh, and then automatically this sort of, this magic happens of this just dunk, 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 dunk. And then also the hammer on, if you do the hammer on, don't, don't take the hammer on away too quickly and really press down on the string and really try to feel the string of how it feels. Oh, I'm checking the table. slide don't keep it there on, at least until the fifth string and then and now comes the second point try to play above your ability uh, it's like an idea that you have similar when you watch a child wanting to run and it just learned how to walk you say, oh, it should maybe you shouldn't run, but the thing, you know, the, the, the children, you can't stop. They start running, and they always run above their ability. I mean, they're gonna fall, and you just have to secure your house with little, you know, every corner has a little, you know, pad on it or something, because you know they're just gonna run, and they fall, and they don't care. But they learn in the moment they fall of what happened, uh, why. That, they, that their motion, you know, led to this derailing of the events. And that's the same with, with, the, with, with the music. So if you don't, if you're always playing a secure, and then you take a metronome and you go faster, that teaches you very much how to keep control and be, on, be in control of your actions. But it doesn't teach you how to react if your mind wanders and you start to derail. Well, you, you don't have much safety net. Uh, a lot of a lot of you know uh, uh, actual uh, reality in playing music is a loss of control because it's fast. It's a time art, and you will get into the situation where you just your mind is absent and you you just 
can't really uh, uh, be in that moment where you need to be. And in that, you need to have experience, like a warning signal in your mind. Oh, this is where I start to derail. This is where I, uh, my hands go ahead, get ahead of my mind. And so you got to practice that. So in other words, try to play as controlled, as I just said, really slow and then slowly increase. Try not to make mistakes, but then give yourself this time where you play too fast. You play above your abilities. And then every time you do that, you start making mistakes. And then you do it again. And the mistake now just taught you something. Not the things that you did right only. They taught you something too, but the mistake actually really taught you something. So. Well, yeah, I know. Uh, but, but you don't have to do that, please. <laughs> Not, not, you don't have to be that fast. I just show you, you know, just get silly fast. Also, play as loud as you possibly can. Um, you can take a bath towel and, you know, open up the banjo and stuff it, you know, with a towel or, uh, you know, a poodle or something, and then put it in there <laughs> really tight, close it in there, and uh, then you play, and it's quiet, quieter. You know, you're not, you're not going to drive everybody else and yourself crazy so so you know i would i would go play maybe quiet and then really loud Ooh, it's not it's, it's very loud so try that you know really because playing fast also is a matter of muscles so you got to build up your muscles and the strength so if you don't play fast if you don't play over your limit you you will probably not build it up that easy it will take it's, it's different so uh you can see a, a lot of musicians you know who are able to sort of be on stage and just sort of wing it they can concentrate on other people and they still be able to play and that's because they know when they start to derail and they can focus real quick on what they're doing again more and try to stay in that moment so that helps a lot so I, I hope that was a little bit of a, a help for you in, in regards of speed. <laughs>